Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking building story, labor and everything in between that happened. So where do we start? Firstly, let's just say I had two different due dates. One being October and one being in November. So in October, we prepared, Daddy and I, the entire family prepared, had everything just ready and waiting, just in case baby girl came. However, when the time came, she was not here. I had three midwives with who worked tirelessly from ensuring that my blood count was the IV to making sure I ate the right foods as well as making sure I did my home for daddy when the night came to help those contractions. When the time drew closer, my midwife called. How was I even assigned a midwife when I started going to the night? There were two nurses around the clinic asking about who the living. So when I thought about it, this I did not know was a thing here where we live. So the nurse approached me and asked me, would you be interested in having a home delivery, a home birth? So I said, well, yes, tell me more. So she started to explain to me, what are the requirements that needs to be met to now have this home delivery? One, it must not be your first pregnancy. Two, if you've had a child already, the child must not be older than five years old. The other being, you must not have had any complications during your pregnancy. From diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension, any surgeries, C-sections, you must not have had any of these things prior to giving birth. And once I, once I explained to her that I didn't have any of these issues, the other thing was, your blood count now must not be lower than 10. Now for me, that was a challenge because from my previous pregnancy with my son, I had really, really low a blood count. So that was, that one kind of shake my and I was like, wait, hey, I really might be able to qualify for this home visit, this home delivery, specifically just because of the blood count. So I kind of lost a little bit of faith when it came to that requirement. Spoke to Ozzy, Ozzy said, well, yeah, that sounds real interesting. I think I'm on board with that. Let's work on the blood count aspect. So we started looking into different foods that could help with the blood count, ensuring that the blood count is over 10 or at least 10. Some of those foods were green leafy vegetables, plenty of that. So your callaloo, your spinach, your broccoli, odi, everything green. That was the key and to ensure any blood count kept going up. So as usual with my clinic dates, there were several times they did blood count checks. And each time we started at blood count being seven, and then it kept going up to 7.5, 8, 9, 9.5, 10, 9.5. So my blood count eventually reached to 10 after numerous days of eating a lot of green leafy foods. I was having it all, all green, everything. So I, when I spoke to my midwife, she said that I had to reach requirements. So then she started doing weekly home visits to check baby's heart rate, make sure baby's position downwards and the pressure was coming down to ensure that her delivery would not be complicated. When the time came now for her to continuously come, come to my home down to the last, she said, we have a problem. And I said, well, what's the problem? She said, well, you meet the requirements of having this home delivery. However, because of your location, that 
it would be a bit difficult to get to where I live with an ambulance, just in case of an emergency. So I told Hazi, Hazi said, well, everything in both side hands. Everything in his hands. Trust in him, we would find a way. Spoke to the wife again, she said, well, she introduced me to the Burton room at the hospital. So I said, well, what, what does this Burton room entail? Now it's the hospital, so you're at the hospital then. However, your family, your husband, and your son would be there with you. Now when I was introduced into this Burton room, and the nurse opened the door, this Burton room was huge. And then there was this big surgical light right above the bed. The bed itself and all was big, massive. Then there were all these monitors around. Then there was this incubator as well for me. Fast forwarding to November. It's November the 7th. This was the day of my baby. Baby's due date. Second due date was the 6th of November. On the 7th, I frantically wake up fuzzy. You say, sure you're ready to go? Say, yeah. say I'm getting some pain here, getting some contractions, it hurts it. You say, you're sure? Say, yeah. You say, all right, getting up, ready to go. Bags were packed and head to the hospital. On the way to the hospital now, we called everybody. My mom, his mom, grandmother, father, everybody knew that Cherise was on the way to the hospital. Time to make this baby. Because everybody was saying, hey, you're making this baby on your birthday girl. Reach to the hospital now. My midwife is there waiting on me. And she's like, yes, I'm telling you that. I'm telling you, making this baby on your birthday you now. She didn't have me getting along and me laughing. She said, but. You are looking like you in pain. I say I in pain. I say I just think I know what to look for. Look for now when it comes to the pain. You say labor pain, you're supposed to be rolling tears. You're not supposed to even be able to walk. I'm supposed to roll out a wheelchair here for you. So I don't want to carry you in that in that button. Let's watch it. I don't go in and do a dilation check to see how far along you are dilated. So we get up on the bed. I'm, I'm already wearing a dress. I think I was actually wearing this dress. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think I was actually wearing this dress on that. While doing the check, she said, right now you dilated, so it's about four centimeters. I say, is that good or bad? She said, well, that's good because the dilation going, let's do it. Keep monitoring every hour to see how you how you do it. All this time, I also had an app on my phone to track and monitor my contractions. By the way, the name of the app is called Contractions. I'll link that down below in the Moving along, it was time for my other dilation check. When she checked again, this was within the hour. She said, but you did not move from four centimeters. So we had to keep you monitoring and make sure everything is okay. All this time, contractions are coming on. To me, they are very, very strong. But to them, because I wasn't dilating fast enough, they wanted to do something called a membrane sweep. This membrane sweep was sort of to detach the uterus, making it easier to dilate. However, that did not happen. That did not happen. They did another check and realized that I still at four centimeters. So my wife came in and she said, let me try to do the membrane sweep. This midwife that came in had a sort of serious demeanor, a sort of intimidating demeanor where it had me really, really uncomfortable. When she went in, she was so rough. Now I understand that she was trying to do the membrane sweep but the previous midwives did the membrane, tried to do a membrane sweep and they weren't as rough. They weren't as rough as she was. And I was on that bed there and I was in pain. Serious, serious pain. Hurting. So much so it brought back 
uncomfortable memories from my previous pregnancy, which I'll talk about in another video. So she stepped out. She took the main midwife that was assigned to me and stepped out of the room and asked where I live and what I would like to do. Because she said it was either that send you home, you do some more homework with Hazi, or we do a cesarean right now and get baby out. That was a big no for me. That was a big no for my husband and I. We said an immediate no. We were told to go home and have intercourse and to also leave the semen inside for about half an hour. It helps with the dilation process. So that's a quick tip there. Ensuring that you have regular intercourse while pregnant and also leaving the semen inside. So we took that option to go home instead of doing the cesarean because once we had that option, we took it. We came home, we relaxed, we relaxed some more, called the rest of the family because everybody was calling, everybody was texting, what's the update, what's going on, everybody frantic. We didn't hear nothing. So we told them, we said, well, we chose the option to go. So they said, well, all right, keep us updated, keep us informed. But I think part of the dilation as well, not happening as quickly, was because of me being a bit anxious. The next day, my midwife called me to do a dilation check before we head to the hospital. So she came home, she did that check, she said, you're dilated to six, which is really, really good. We moved from four to six. She's happy, I was happy, everybody was happy. She said, I think we need to head up to the hospital right now. So well, I'm not getting that much pain, even though I'm dilated. After talking to her, because you wanted to wait till lunchtime. However, I wanted to go right that instant. So we left home again, on the road, in traffic, bumper to bumper traffic, as he put on some drives. We read safely, in time, incident free. Praise the most high. When we got there, my midwives were ready for me. Room was ready for me. Again, this big room, big lights, surgical lights over. The nervousness started to kick in. Through talking to them, I told them, they asked about my previous labor and delivery, and I told them they would have to most likely waste my water bath because my water bath did not waste. So my midwives were there and they were just monitoring me, ensuring that I did some squats, did some walks around the room to help the dilation process somehow. They said, well, if it is your water bath does not burst by lunchtime, we will burst this water bath for you. Are you comfortable with that? Call Hazi. As Hazi stepped out to get lunch, he said, yes, I'm comfortable with that once you're comfortable with it. Time passed by, they came, they did another check. They said, well, you only dilated to seven centimeters. So from the morning, so lunchtime, I only dilated to 7 centimeters. Now it was 3 o'clock and it was time to waste my water bath. It was not painful, I can tell you that, that much. So while I was in the water bath, my midwife spoke to me about everything step by step and all the tools and materials that she was going to use to burst the water bath. Once the water bath was burst, I felt a trickle. It was not like a gush of water. Then the pain started to come on. The intense pain where I could no longer hold back. Tears, everything came out. Tears, the crying, the groaning, the wanting to scream. Then the midwife asked Hazi if he would like to come on the side of me to support me. When they saw how much pain I was in, she directed him to come behind me to support my back on the bed. My was was behind me, I felt a relief, I felt a peace, I felt a calm, I felt loved. I felt so much support from him just being behind me. Then the nurses wanted to do another dilation check. When they did that check, they said, you're at 8 centimeters and we are feeling baby's head down in the passage we're ready to come out. 
as nervous, nervous, nervous. You're gonna say, oh my gosh, I am really about to push on this baby right now. So my midwife came to me and said, do you remember how to breathe and push out, baby? I said, please remind me, please remind me. So she told me this time, she told me exactly what to do and how to breathe. She said, well, we just did another check and when there's a big contraction coming, you need you to start to push. Hazi's there on one side, another midwife on the other side, and a midwife at the bottom of me, ready to receive baby, baby girl when she comes out. So the contractions came, and I started to push. However, because of me doing a lot of the exercises during the earlier part of the day, I started to get really tired and fatigued. During this process, I was only allowed to eat ice. So Hazi was on the side of me, feeling me crushed ice. So the ice helped. I felt a lot more energy, a lot more energetic and ready to push some more. When I started to push, I started to feel that intense pressure down there. Intense. Midwife called Hazi to tell Hazi, come and see baby's head almost out. So he, is, he came back up on top of me. He's like, sure, he, sure, his baby's head is almost out. You could do this. You could do this. And at that point in time, the only person I could have heard in that room was him. I could have only heard his voice alone saying, hey, come on, you could do this, you could do this. And that was all the support I needed to really continue pushing. One more long push. And he held my leg there. Hussey held my leg and he said, come on babe, push, push, you're almost there, push, push, push. And I am there and I gave everything I had, every single thing I had, and push. And baby's head was finally up. And the midwife said, hold on, hold on, don't push no more. We need to secure baby's head to make sure that the umbilical cord isn't wrapped around her neck. Once baby's head was out, I was feeling so tired, exhausted, drained, fatigued. I felt like I didn't have anything more left in me to continue pushing. However, I had to give another push to get the rest of baby's body out. Once I got the green light to push, baby girl's body was out. And there was such a relief, a feeling of joy, a feeling of love, unconditional love that I got to experience over again. Once baby was fully out, Hazi came to me, tears in his eyes, and he embraced me so tight. He said, Babe, I love you. Thank you. You did great. Then the midwife came to Hazi and said, Would you like to cut the umbilical cord? Is this going to hurt me, Amy? <laughs> and she said, no, 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 it's not going to hurt her. Hurt her. All this while I'm watching them and I could feel so much love. So much joy. So much peace. Now it was 
starting to get myself cleaned up. This was this wasn't much of a long process. The life took me to bathroom to clean me up. I was in so much pain after coming off the bed to walk to the bathroom. I needed help than anything because I was so tired. Surprisingly, the first person that my daughter saw when she came out was her dad. The first person who held her was her dad. Once daddy was finished holding her, the nurses put her onto my chest for that skin to skin contact. And when I saw her for the very first time, I was so in love. It was so much joy, it was so much happiness, it was so much. I felt that accomplishment. By the way, one of the best things about this experience is being able to leave the hospital within two hours after giving that same night. It is such a joy to be able to experience giving birth to a healthy baby and being able to come home with your family with the new addition to the family. I pray that all women can experience the joy of giving birth and motherhood as well as experiencing a family family bond, family love, family support. I would have gotten a lot of support from my dad, my mom, my grandmother, all my siblings, and I thank you all very much for your support, your love, and your care. In addition, I also got a lot of support from my husband, father, his mother, his siblings, and his family. I thank you all very much for being on this journey with me, with us, with our family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to live my living story. Let me know what you guys think about my written story. I really want to know about your experiences. Just as you all took the time to listen to mine. I thank you guys so very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.